Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today we're out here on a small creek and we're going to talk about my two very favorite methods for targeting trout on creeks like this, whether they're stalker trout or they're wild trout. If you guys want to learn more on how to fish these small creeks, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. Alright, so to kick this thing off, I want to talk a little bit about the rod that I'm using. For any kind of trout fishing, I like to use a small ultralight rod. I like to fly fish as well, so the same exact setup that we're talking about today works really good on flies with a different float selection, but my favorite rod to use is a two to six pound ultralight rod. I like Okumas, you can use any kind of rod out there, but get something that's a little bit smaller and about six feet long. Anything shorter than that's gonna be hard to cast a long distance, anything longer than that. Fishing these overhung creeks like this is gonna be really tough to go ahead and cast and not be getting caught up in the brush and in the trees above you. For the reel, I have a 3000 series RTX Okuma reel. And what I have on here is about a 20 pound to a 30 pound braided line, which is not necessary for the size of trout that we're catching, obviously. But what it does really nicely is float on top of the surface of the water. Whether you're fishing in a lake, whether you're fishing in a creek, whether you're fishing a little bit bigger river, you want this setup to be floating on top of the surface so that it's floating with your bobber and you can properly manage your line, which we're gonna take you to the river here in a second and show you how. What I have on this 20 pound line is tied with a blood knot or a uni knot that is right here. Let me show you. So I have a 10 pound piece of fluorocarbon line about 20 feet long tied to this with a blood knot. And we have a bunch of tutorials on our page Addicted Fishing on how to tie some of those uni knots or blood knots or anything like that. So if you guys want to learn more on how to do those knots, be sure to look that up on our page Addicted Fishing. So I have about 10 or so feet of fluorocarbon line, about a 10 pound fluorocarbon because this is a nice clear creek. I don't want to be spooking these fish down to an addicted fixed float. And these addicted fixed floats work really well. We have some newer models coming out there, a little bit smaller that are easier to fish these smaller creeks with. But this is an addicted fixed float made by Mustad. And it's a, it's a fixed float that slides up and down your line, regulating the depth that you want it at. So my very favorite way to target fish in these little creeks like this is usually with flies. And in a situation like this where it's very hard to cast a fly rod, a lot of overhanging brush and trees, this float setup, this fixed float setup with your same fly that you would use works really, really well. There's times, this creek in particular, we're not allowed to use bait, but if you guys wanted to use any kind of power eggs, power bait, any of the little badass procure eggs, any kind of trout egg, anything that's gonna be in that creek that those fish are gonna be feeding on, those are gonna work really well too. But my very favorite is to go artificial and to use just a woolly bugger fly like this here. So a couple of the different options of flies that I have here, you can see I keep it very simple. I have some small profiles with different colored heads. I have a lot of black. Black is definitely my favorite. This is a leech pattern. This is a woolly bugger pattern. Those are the two differences there. And I like to have two or three different colors of those woolly buggers with two or three different colors of fly head itself. So I have some that are a dark color, some that are more of a black, some that are gold, some that have no heads at all that just look like a tiny little leech in that river. And really we're kind of targeting and matching the same profile as the same sort of food that these fish are eating in these little creeks like this. Okay, so the main thing I'm gonna talk about when fishing little creeks like this, other than your setup being important, is to be stealthy. And be, be stealthy and actually hunt these fish. A lot of times we're gonna be looking for very small pockets and very small zones where these fish are gonna be living. And we don't wanna walk up in front of the fish, so don't start upriver in a hole. Start at the very bottom of the hole casting up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sneak through the bushes here, being very stealthy and quiet, trying not to give too much of a profile of myself on the bank. Okay, so what you guys see here is an absolutely perfect trout run. This is what we're looking for in these kinds of creeks like this. We have a fast straight stretch coming all the way down, big boulder or ledge in the middle of the river, and an instant drop off to about five to six feet and a nice slow bubble line current. The bubbles are gonna represent where the food is being pushed to in the river for these fish. That's the path of least resistance. So any bug, any, any eggs, anything that's floating down this river that these fish are gonna eat is gonna get pulled into those eddy lines, which is the same area that those bubbles are gonna be forming. So, I'm guessing my top of my run here is about two and a half feet. I'm gonna take my fixed float. I'm gonna go about two and a half feet there. I have enough weight on my jig that I don't need to add any. And I'm gonna start my first few casts from the very bottom of the run. So we're gonna start talking about line management right away. We want that bobber to float as slowly and as carefully as it can and with natural current speed the whole way through. I just got a bite. 
the whole way through this run. So what you need to do is you keep your rod tip at a 45 degree angle over the water just by cocking your wrist. That's all you need to do is keep your wrist cocked, keep your line up off the water so that you're not getting a hard current pull on the end of your rod, pulling your, pulling your gear down faster than the current itself. I'm gonna give it a little bit of line so it makes it to the end of this run. And I'm gonna bring it back in. Now that I made that first cast, I'm actually gonna start a little bit closer to me this time. Just like that. Keeping my rod tip up, keeping my line up off the water, but again, letting that bobber float at the same exact speed as the current itself. That's what's most important of all, is making this presentation with the fly down there looking very natural. Now that I've made those two casts, I'm gonna actually keep my same depth here. I'm gonna try the last spot that I've hit in this run, and I'm gonna try to break it down mathematically. I'm gonna go close, middle, and then I'm gonna go far, and I'm gonna fish all those depths at the same depth, then I'm gonna change my depth itself. Ooh, that's gonna go right over here, right underneath this brush, right underneath that structure, right where those fish are gonna be hiding, waiting for food to come by them. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our depth. That might have not been deep enough, so I'm gonna go about six inches, six to eight inches here. I'm gonna make the same series of casts. I'm gonna start close, fish this inside. It's not a bad thing to have these flies dragging across the bottom of the creek either. But a lot of the times the same food that those fish are eating are bouncing and rolling along the gravel. Okay, working my way out in the next cast a little bit further. That was a fish, darn it. Pulled it right out of his mouth. Okay, just had one bite there. I'm gonna try to make that exact same cast again. And that goes to bring up a subject that's very important. Treat every single bobber down as if it's a fish. Cause what I just did there, I thought I was dragging bottom. I thought I was about to get snagged. I gave myself a little lift, really soft and pulled it right out of that fish's mouth. So. As long as that bobber is going to go down, do the same reaction every time that you would if it was a fish. Lift fast, pull hard, and try to set that hook on that fish. Oh. Got him. Oh, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I went against my word once again. That was a nice trout too. Okay. Missed that one again. I'm guessing there's more. Usually if there's this little zone like that that those fish are living in, there's gonna be more than one fish living there. Damn it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work my way up a little bit more in the hole so that I can get this nice soft eddy on this far side. You can see I'm really breaking this run apart. These fish aren't going anywhere. They live in these runs and they just sit here and eat. That's how they survive. They just sit in one spot, they expend as little energy as possible and they eat and eat and eat. So getting a good cast into each little pocket of that run is gonna allow you to hook more fish because you're gonna be covering every little feeding alley and little feeding zone that those fish have in that particular hole that you're fishing. Oh, I just saw him move forward again. Darn it. Okay, now just because, in the name of science, we're gonna add about another eight inches of depth. I'm gonna go through there just one more time. Maybe that fly's not actually hitting the bottom. Seems like it's pretty darn deep over there. All right, so now that I've effectively covered that with the fly, I can either change my fly. If you're in a different creek where you can use bait, you can change to bait, you can change your presentation. But what I'm gonna use next is my second favorite tip that I'm gonna give you guys, and that's to go with some sort of hardware or spinner. So let's get changed up, let's talk about those, and let's see if we can't get the same fish to bite again. So the cool part about these fixed floats, you can cut them off, everything stays intact just like that. I can hang it off of my waders here, and then I can go to my other very favorite way of catching trout, and that is with a spinner. So I have a couple different options of spinners here. Some are Blue Fox, some are Panther Martin, some are Rooster Tail themselves. And the key is to have a little bit of everything. 
and also I have these cast masters here. So you can see my favorite little selection of, of gear is about four or five different presentations. One's gonna be a smaller spoon, one's gonna be a very aggressive vibrating spinner, and one's gonna be your typical Vibrac setup that you would use for just about any salmon trout or steelhead. So what I'm gonna go with first is my favorite one. I'm gonna pick my black and gold Panther Martin here. And having a good variety of sizes, anywhere from a size two up to a size four is what you're gonna want. Like this is a size four, obviously pretty big for this little creek. I'm gonna be ending up getting snagged. It's gonna be a lot harder to get a good presentation through there. So I'm gonna go with my small one with my little Panther Martin here. And I just cut my fixed float off, add on my little Panther Martin here, and I'm gonna start working that run in that close middle far strategy, effectively going through the whole thing again to see if there's anything there. Okay, so I have this thing rigged up. Obviously, there's a big treble hook on here, and the, the creek that we're fishing right now has a bunch of wild trout in it. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bend down, and I don't have any sidewash hooks with me, but if you guys wanted to, and you were fishing a wild trout creek with spinners, you wanna bend those barbs or just cut a few of the hook points off and make it barbless and a little more safe on those wild trout because we are not here to rip up their faces or to kill them in any way, shape, or form. So we're gonna keep that very harmless on the fish. We got a treble hook on there. We're gonna keep it nice and easy so that we can unhook them easily and let those things go swim back into the creek. So I'm gonna take the same mentality as we were starting with the bobber in the same hole with the spinner. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna start on the inside, I'm gonna start in this ripply section where I know there could be some fish feeding. I'm gonna slowly work my cast downriver as I go further to cover the rest of the run. So, nice little backhand cast, I'm gonna keep it low, keep it easy, and reeling it straight back down river, I'm gonna to have to reel pretty darn quick. I need to keep that movement, I need to keep that blade spinning, and I'm gonna pull it right back towards me making quick, short little casts. like that. I'm going to work my cast out towards the middle of the creek a little bit more. You can see as I'm starting to fish through here, I'm making a little bit different cast every single time. Because the thing about these fish is they're very aggressive. If you don't normally get them on the first to the third cast through a zone, odds are there is no fish there or it's a fish that's been spooked or is already bit or anything like that to where you're not gonna be using your time effectively by casting and casting and casting at that fish. So I've made just about a different cast every time I've casted here, slowly working it down lower into the run. I haven't moved my feet at all and I'm just gonna start working my way right into the strike zone where I caught the last fish here before. All right, so we've effectively covered this entire hole. What I'm gonna do now is take this versatile presentation, the spinner itself, and I'm gonna work into some other different broken water and some faster water, which these work really great for fishing and see if we can't find one there. Okay, so now what we have is a fast, bouldery, broken section of water. You can see all the little hidey holes that these fish can live in where there's constantly food coming towards them. So I'm gonna start at the top of this and I'm gonna take two steps after every cast and try to cover each good pockety boulder that I can find throughout this run. Got him. Oh, it came off. Oh. Oh, that was a big one. All right, everybody. So we've worked our way all the way down through this run. And the key is to be effective and even better at trout fishing on little creeks like this is to have a lot of movement. Go around, search for fish, go up and downstream, find those bouldery pockets and those foam lines and go out and have yourself a blast catching fish in these cool little creeks like this. If you guys wanna see more trout tutorials just like this one, go up here and click this link to this next video. There's all kinds of informational and educational stuff for you guys to go out and have more fun on the water. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn your bell notification on, give us a thumbs up if you like this video and comment below and you can be the comment of the day like this guy right here. Thank you so much for tuning in you guys. You stay fishy and we'll see you out there.